Okay, so here they're saying which of the following does not belong to group 14, right? And they have given you different, different electronic configurations. Now you need to tell them which of these will not be the electronic configuration of a member of group 14, right? So I'm going to start scribbling here itself. Okay, so you have helium 2s1, helium 2s1. So helium is 1s2, after that 2s1, which means this is going to belong to group 1a. Okay, or group one or group first day or alkali metals. Okay, uh, after that you have helium 3s2. Now helium 3s2 is not a real electronic configuration because after helium you need to have 1s. Okay, sorry, you need to have 2s, then 2p, then 3s. So this is not really a correct electronic configuration. So I'm going to discard it. Then what do we have in option three? We have helium 2s2, 2p2. We have helium 2s2, 2p2. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, which means we have. Uh, six electrons right so six electrons refers to carbon or alternatively you can see that the outer shell electronic configuration is ns2 np2 and yes that is a mark of a group 14 element so yes this is going to be a group 14 element right then what do we have we have neon 3s2 3p1 okay neon 3s2 3p1 which means this is going to be a group 13 element right ns2 np1 this is going to be a group 13 element this is the trial and third one is a petrol okay so cool which of these do we see that it does not belong to group 14 let's take a look let's see a little bit about group 14 elements as well so here you can see we have group 14 elements which have noble gas configuration as the core electrons and after that we have ns2 np2 okay so we have carbon silicon germanium tin and lead Okay, uh, all of them have the ability to show plus four oxidation state as we go down the group. We can also see plus two oxidation state becoming increasingly stable. Okay, so yes, this is important. Uh, cool, so let's move on. What is going to be the answer? The answer is going to be one, two, and four, right? So first, second, and fourth. Third one, yes, it is a group 14 element. First one is a alkali metal. Second one is not a real electronic configuration. And fourth one is a trial, okay? So option A, one, two, and four. All of them is going to be the right answer to this question, option A. Okay, so here we're being asked to choose the incorrect statement regarding borazine. Okay, so we have a few statements here. Option A is saying borazine is called inorganic benzene. Option B is saying borazine reacts with, uh, diborane reacts with ammonia to give borazine. Okay, option C is saying like organic benzene. Uh, borazine does not give addition products. Okay, option D is saying borazine is more reactive than benzene. Okay, so let's take a look. So yes, first of all, how exactly do we produce borazine? We produce borazine by allowing diborane to react with ammonia in a 1 is to 2 condition at high temperatures, right? So we get borazine or inorganic benzene. So yes, inorganic benzene is the other name for borazine. What else do we have here? Take a look. So borazine is actually more reactive than benzene. Benzene, we know that uh, unless you have a very strong reagent and specific conditions present, generally benzene does not react, okay? Benzene needs specific conditions to react, whereas borazine is a lot more reactive than benzene. Benzene does not undergo addition reactions, okay? For the, what is the characteristic reaction of benzene? It is going to be EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Whereas in the case of borazine, it does undergo addition reactions. Okay, so yes, this is what we needed to know. Now let's go ahead, let's take a look at the options again. Now we can mark true or false here. So, borazine is called inorganic benzene, definitely true. Borazine reacts, uh, diborane reacts with ammonia to give borazine, yes, true. Conditions have not been mentioned, but fundamentally this is true. Like organic benzene, borazine does not give addition product. That is not correct, that is false. Borazine does give addition products, whereas organic benzene gives us substitution products. And then lastly, borazine is more reactive than benzene. That is also true. So we have only one false statement. We had to pick the incorrect statement. So we have only one false statement or incorrect statement. So option C is going to be the right answer to this question. So here they're saying which of the following sequence will show an increase in ionization enthalpy options from carbon to silicon, from silicon to germanium, from germanium to tin or from tin to lead. Okay, so these are your options. Basically, we are talking about group 14 elements here or the tetrals. Okay, so here what do we know? The general trend is that the ionization enthalpy is going to decrease as we go from top to bottom in a group. Correct. But of course, in P block, there are, you know, certain exceptions to this rule. So basically, you can see that is where 
this question kicks in here is you where you have the exception right as you go down the group carbon silicon germanium tin and lead you would expect it to be progressively like this okay but in the case of lead the ionization enthalpy is greater than that of tin why is that so that is so because in lead you have the pore shielding effect of f electrons also added as a factor okay so that is what happens. Let's take a look at the trend of ionization enthalpy. So here you can see this is the trend of ionization enthalpy. Okay, so uh, whatever units they have assumed here, in those very units, you can see that for tin, it is 708 and for lead, it is 715, which means, yes, there is an increase in the ionization enthalpy. So yes, this is what happens. Where do we see an increase? We see an increase from tin to lead. Right, rest of the group follows the trend of ionization enthalpy from tin to lead is where we see an exception. Okay, cool. So let's see uh, what do we have from tin to lead is an option D. So yeah, so option D is going to become the right answer to this question. All right, so here they're asking you for the correct order of melting point of group 14 elements. Okay. You have different given orders here. Now you need to remember that the general trend is that as we go down the group, the melting point is going to decrease. Okay, down the group melting point decreases because the mm bond strength reduces as the size of the atoms increases. Multiple ways of understanding the same concept. Down the group melting point is decreasing. What is the reason? The reason is that the bond strength of the same atom, right? Mm bond strength, the given atom uh, uh, bond strength is going to decrease. Okay, because of that, what hap? Uh, sorry, why is this happening? This is happening because as we go down the group, the size of the atoms is going to increase. Okay, you need to remember this now. However, as you can see, there is an exception, right? So you would generally expect it to be like this, but there's an exception. Lead has a greater melting point than tin. Why is that so? Because of the pore shielding of F electrons in the case of lead. Okay, so yes, in the case of lead, you have a pretty big nucleus and because of pore shielding of F electrons, you have more uh, charge that is felt on the outermost uh, electrons. Okay, so since tin and lead are soft metals, therefore their melting points are much lower. Okay, this is just a general fact that's given there. Okay, so yeah. Here, take a look at the actual values that you see. So you can see for carbon, the melting point is 4373 Kelvin, right? That is much higher than the rest of the group. After that, you have silicon, germanium, almost in the same vicinity. Then you have tin, which is smaller. And then again, in the case of lead, the melting point increased slightly. It is 600 Kelvin. Okay. So yes, this is what happens. You know the order now. Carbon is much greater than silicon, germanium, tin, and lead is again greater. Okay, so yes, uh, where do we see the exception kicking in with tin and lead, right? So yes, this is where we need to look, okay? This is the first thing you need to look. And of course, like this part of it is pretty simple, right? So obviously option B can be discarded. Um, option C is incorrect because of the tin and lead thing, right? Option D, see, again, the same order is reversed. Of course, we're not going to fall for that, right? Right answer to this question is going to be option A. Okay, so here we have an organic molecule and we need to find out which functional group is not present in the given compound, right? So take a look at the compound in a bit more detail. Now here they have uh, marked the functional groups for us, right? So you can see here we have a ketone group, right? And then this is also ketone, right? And this is what? This is going to be amine, correct? No, 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 no. Be very careful. This entire thing, C-O-N-H, right? C-O-N-H-R is going to become amide group. You need to be very careful. Amide is the catch here. And honestly, that was the only thing, right? Apart from that, everything is simple. That this is C-O-O, -O, uh, you know, R-C-O-O-R dash. That is an ester. You know this. This is pretty like okay to identify. I don't think you'd make a mistake here, but amide is where I think a lot of you would actually trip and fall and get the incorrect answer to this question. So be very careful. Okay, so here, what do we have? We have ketone, amide, and ester, all three functional groups. Okay, right, I hope you're clear. So we have ketone, we have amide, we have ester, which means we don't have ether, right? This is, hold on, I'll use a better color. So, 
just because you have a COC, right, or an ROR does not mean it is an ether. Here you have a carbon, agreed, but there is C double bond OO. That is the entire functional group, which means it's an ester, not an ether. Okay, clear now? So option D, ether is going to be the right answer. So yes, option D will be the right answer to this question.